Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I just want to do a review. A review of the latest update, if you can call it an update, because it was an expedition. The expedition was called Adrift. Yes, it had an anchor for an emoji, which is rather curious, because that stops you from drifting, doesn't it? Yeah, okay, but I guess it's, it's quite hard to pick up an emoji that's for a drift. Anyway, the Adrift Expedition has delivered in some pretty darn gnarly rewards, and one of them being this iron vulture ship, which is like a hauler that hovers in place, which is really quite cool. If you, you can even scrap it down, and you can take those hovering wings, because that's the element that gives it the hover ability, and put it on different haulers. Not only that, we got two new skins as a reward inside of this expedition. One gives it camouflage stealth-like paint, and the other one gives it dark sort of metal and rusted plate metal as a skin texture. I'm hoping in future we get to see more skins appearing inside of cosmetics. Perhaps even, say, a Nexus skin with all those lovely neon lights and stuff. I mean, shall I like my neon lights? Heck <laughs> yes! That'd be pretty nice, like Tron lights, that'd be awesome. And maybe even a Beskar-type texture. A nice shiny metallic metal, even more metallic -y and awesomeness and brushed sort of metal. In components to, you know, the metal textures we've got now. Yeah, anyway, really like the rewards for this expedition. We also got a little scuttling pet. We got some base parts in way of crashed ships, which look pretty darn epic. But what did I like about this expedition the most? The thing that I like the most, other than the rewards, is the fact that we got thrown into an alternate reality, an alternate dimension that mentions the void. And I'm wondering whether Hello Games might take the components that they put together inside of this expedition, flesh it out a little bit more and deliver it in as the void inside of game, as a ways and means of us maybe jumping in, grabbing some loot. Now I was thinking the loop 16, 16, 16, 16, perhaps that can relate to the void. So why not make it to every 16th galaxy that's out there? is void related this whole lonesome more experience on your own a solo sort of thing with abandoned stations and that more sort of survival element and planets that are a little bit more crazy when it comes to terrain sort of generation and maybe even previous vanilla type builds to some of the planets where we can see those snake-like structures that come above ground which would be pretty darn awesome Hello Games, if you're listening, I really love this expedition because it stirs the imagination and it shows that it is possible to put an alternate realm into the game. And if you can put in the void, that'd be freaking awesome. I mean, every single building was abandoned and full of that pustule organic matter. It'd be nice if the actual planets themselves had a lot of that pustule and organic matter on them, an actual void planet as a biome and add in more sort of hungering, festering creatures. I mean, I love the hungering sort of monsters you've got now. Them guys. And the worms that leap and jump out of the planet. Great. And then you've got the little guys around the actual um, abandoned buildings inside of the eggs. But what lays those eggs? I want to see a giant mother type alien appearing. Something that you have to go toe to toe in, in your exomech. Alien starly. Take that freaking queen alien. Chicka pow pow, chicka boom boom. Maybe have it lingering around, perhaps an old abandoned archive or something, and it's nearly as big as the archive. It comes scuttling down its freaking exterior, hissing at you. And, oh, it'd be freaking epic. Hello, games. I know you can make this sort of stuff happen. You're the makers of dreams. I guess you are, like the Willy Wonkers of the gaming world. If, yep, if you could deliver in the void, that'd be freaking epic. And even make, maybe even deliver in Void Prime. You know, that'd be awesome. I was also thinking, you've got loop 16, so if every 16th galaxy was like that, which would be epic, maybe you could add in loop 19, which is like the Void Mother's realm, which is probably more so the realm of glass, add in more of the Atlantium, add in more like Law Mother, the Void Mother tie-ins, maybe add in a few more Sentinels going on there, because it's almost like the firewall between the realm of glass and the Void, or at least that's how I see it. But you could deliver in another alternate world there. Every 19th galaxy have a void, um, a realm of glass like realm. So at least as we're traveling through all these 256 galaxies or 255, however you want to count them, at least it feels like there's something different as you're going through. If you could sort of 
add other stuff into each of the different galaxies, maybe different mods or some sort of variant to those galaxies to make it worthwhile doing the exploration to all 255, 256 galaxies. I think you could be onto a winner winner chicken dinner all the way home to the freaking bank, mate, because yeah, that'd be. I'd add so much more depth into this universe. And seeing this expedition has made me so excited for the future of how this could be delivered into future expeditions. I mean, this had lore, it had decent rewards, it had this whole sort of hold on, there's all this untapped potential, it had hidden sort of elements, like if you're inside of the Nexus and you actually initiate a scan, you know, like a pulse scan, not an advisor scan, but a pulse scan, you see all the multiplayers appear. Pretty lovely little effect, that. Heck yes, it was almost like having the echo camps and bringing in the echo. Well, Jums, here is the actual trailer for Adrift. And you can see here on the actual planet's surface, there's eye stalk creatures, there's giant tentacle octopus creatures. I was on this starting planet for some time. I did not see either of those two variants of fauna, which I kind of thought they looked very Void-esque. And it was kind of a little bit missed. Opportunity there, I think, to make the planet feel more alien. But anyways, we also got to see this ship land and it sort of hinted that this would be the ship that you actually run the expedition in so you can really build a kinship with it. But no, it gave us these shitey shuttles instead, which was a bit of a shame. I would have liked to have used this ship throughout the whole of the expedition. And you can see the effects on the engine there. The effects on the engine are freaking awesome and sublime. Yet, inside of game, when I claimed mine, I flew around in it, I did not see those lovely sort of effects happening on my ship. I tried all different sorts of ship trails, and I couldn't for the life of me replicate those ship engine effects. And I've had a lot of people inside of my comments saying that they couldn't either, so I don't think I'm alone on that. I came across a few travellers' graves, but none of them were by wreckage of ship parts, so I'm not too sure why they stripped those out. I mean, they gave them as actual rewards, and they're not in the actual expedition. So, you know, when I am giving the score, I am going to be marking it down a little because what we saw in the trailer just didn't come into fruition into the actual Perhaps game. That's this void where, you know, they can't see the travellers, we can't see them, and it's closing down that sort of rift. I love it, where all these sort of boundary failures are happening. You've actually made it so the lore is being actualised into the game in a roundabout way. I want to see more of that. So... The score that I'm giving this is based on, you know, the potential, which I shouldn't really be giving it scores for potential. But because inside of your patch notes, you've actually said, because we've gone to town on this actual expedition, it's an expedition that's content could seep over into an update. And you also put, there's much, much more to come in 2024. Much, much more. That signifies something bigger on the cards down the way and you have in the past said that you wouldn't release an expedition in place of an update. Well this is an expedition in place of an update but you hinted that this is kind of update sized. But I think that's because there's promise and potential coming from this expedition into game. That's how I'm reading between the lines. Are you with me on this, people watching this video? Do you th Are you as excited as me for the rest of this year? Sound up in the comments. Heck yes. But anyways, if I was just to solely score this on the expedition, and the rewards, and the lore, and the play, I mean the play of it, I would say there was a couple of repeat um, sort of milestones in this one, but not many. I love the whole going out into nebulas and seeing the nebulas rendered in because it's very, very rare that you take the time to look at the beauty of the nebulas, and they were beautiful. So I really appreciated that, the whole dreaming aspect was quite lovely. And I also liked that you thought about adding in a couple of milestones that we haven't seen before. So the whole one of gazing up and looking at the stars, even though the actual text for that was freaking clueless, really. I mean, considering that, you know, you can see stars on dead planets, and you can see stars when you're flying around in your ship, the last thing I thought of was standing there on a planet in the night time and then gaze up. It just didn't occur to me. I had to go on Reddit. Found that on Reddit, how to do that. But anyway, that one I got stuck on. But after I did it, I was like, that was a nice little touch. That was a good little um, milestone to throw in there, that was. Got the grey matter working, but for mine, it just sort of seeped out the air, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I would say that I didn't get bored 
inside of this expedition. I would say all the milestones were buried enough that a lot of them actually happened ambulantly anyway. So scanning the creatures, by the time I got to phase five, where you, you know, pop the scan in the creature wobble, there's 32 of them to be found, I'd already scanned 31 anyway. Scanned one more, the badge popped. And I was like, well, that, that was lovely. That was a little bonus, you know. So there was a lot of that going on the inside of this expedition. It felt balanced. It felt like you had played through a couple of times in the Hello Games studio and said, that'll be a good milestone to pop at this point because I'm almost there. Same with the nanites. You know, all I'd done was upload my scans. I've got 700 nanites from my scans. And then all those little balls that I've been picking up from those grumpy little critters eggs on the planet, I just prop those into the refiner, refine those. Easy, you know, but you had to think. How can I get my nanites? And I loved it. I really did. The other mission that got people a little bit flummoxed was finding the androidy type synthetic pets. And I thought it interesting that you've added in these synthetic pets into what is essentially going into the void-like realm where we know the echoes may reside. And then these synthetic pets. It made me wonder, are you going to be tweaking something with these synthetic planets? Are you going to be doing something to these droid worlds? Is there going to be more to these abandoned systems and abandoned stations in whatever you've got cooking up for the rest of the year? And then it took me back to the potential all over again, like a crazy loop of all my days. What's going on here? Can I speculate on this? Can I speculate on that? This, this expedition ticked all the freaking boxes for me, I'm not going to lie. And I'm going to be hitting it up on my PC safe and doing it all over again. And I'm actually excited to do it for a second time because I enjoyed it the first time around. And I know that there's ways I can do it faster on my second playthrough. And I'm really looking forward to it. And I can't say that about many other expeditions. So for that reason, I think this is in my top three expeditions. And for that reason, I'm also going to be scoring this a 9.2 out of 10. Heck yeah, she's done good, freaking Hello Games. The only reason why I don't give it a freaking full on 10 is there were a few bugs. And some of them were a little bit embarrassing, to be fair. Like, if you didn't accept the freighter that was rewarded to you, you couldn't then claim the ghost frigate. And then you couldn't actually end off the expedition. I know you put it out in the first round of patches, but come on. That was kind of a little bit, you know, a bit of a schoolboy error, that one, to be fair. Because people may have already got a better freighter, or they wouldn't want to claim that freighter. Because, you know, it, it did look like an electric toothbrush or something. It, it wasn't the bestest of looking at freighters, to be fair. If you opened up a Sentinel Dreadnought or something, boom! You know, everybody would have blinked accepted it. But you gave them a turd of a freighter to accept. Of course some people are going to not accept that. You should have gave him something awesome to accept. A big golden freaking dreadnought or a, a sentinel freighter. Boom, yes. You wouldn't have... And then if anybody did reject it, it's their own freaking fault, isn't it? <laughs> you know? So there was that one. And then there was another one that if somebody had already got something S-classed, I mean, some people have used save editors, so, you know, that still happens. But it said that they couldn't actually claim the items because their inventory was full. Yes, you did fix that on the next set of patches. But again, it was a progress blocker and something that would hang actual progress. I also had people saying to me that as they went out to do the dream one, it wasn't spawning in the nebula and it just wasn't happening for them no matter what they did. And they had to restart their expedition all over again. I don't think I've seen that on the actual patch fixes. So I don't know whether that's still a thing or whether it's even registered with you. It's not like it throws up a game crash or an error code. And I don't know whether people have been reporting it on the Zendesk. I mean, I haven't had it happen to me. I haven't reported it. But it is in my comments as something that a lot of people in the verse have experienced. So again, it wasn't a bug-free expedition. And that's why it's lost a couple of points. But for myself, I didn't experience any bugs. The only real issue I found was at Expedition Rendezvous 4. Somebody had built a base, a loft of the actual rendezvous point, and as I was flying in, it locked onto their base, and then it put the expedition marker all the way underneath the ground, and I couldn't find rendezvous four for some time. It took a lot of piddling about to find it, and when I finally did, I actually reported that base, but it was still there. And when I went back, it's still there, and I don't know whether it's causing other people issue, but yeah, the base reporting system could do with being a bit better, or the way that you lock down the actual 
decent end points of each of the expeditions need to be a little bit more protected. In fact, bases as a whole need to be a little bit more protected. It's very rare I share out portal codes anymore of bases that have taken me longer than an hour to build for fear that they might get trolled or boxed in or have another base put over the top of it. So yeah, base protection needs to be upped and needs to be looked at, especially if you are going to be rolling with light, no fire, where you're going to have bases right next to each other or upon a shared planet. Good luck, because I can imagine people building giant wooden sheds over people people's lovely freaking castles. Anyway, I really enjoyed this expedition and I'm very, very looking forward to the rest of this year. When you say much, much more, I honestly think that some of the things that you've been testing inside of these latest expeditions is all about the future progression of No Man's Sky. I'm hoping that this one can sort of mean that you might be thinking about putting in an alternate universe. The fact that Utopia, we had to bring a dead system back to life through scanning everything, cataloguing everything for the Utopia Corporation, and now this one, we spent the whole time in abandoned systems, makes me wonder if there's something coming in line with the abandoned system and bringing them back into iteration, bringing them back into restoration and making them a functional unit of space again. And could it be that there is going to be a whole dimension just full of abandoned systems waiting for us to go and chart, bring back to life and slowly maybe work through the actual, I don't know, are we some sort of defrag, some sort of error checking, some sort of antivirus for the actual Atlas, you know, us as travellers or anomalies. You know, are we there for a reason in computer code? I kind of think we might be, but I can't say for sure. And was this part four of your ARG? It didn't say anything in the patch notes, didn't say anything in where you put your little emojis all in a row. I don't know whether the ARG is still going or whether it's ended. If you could please throw us a freaking bone on that, that'd be lovely. At least then I could got more to speculate on and wonder whether ARG part four has come to a conclusion or whether it's still running. Please let us know. Anyways, I really like the fact that you also made the Nexus completely empty apart from Nada, who was just there, sort of slumped over as an empty shell. That was freaking awesome. Something I would have liked to have seen is to see Ariadne walking around, because we all know that she's like a, a doppelganger and a clone or a spy or something. You know, she's a spanner in the works. It would have been cool if when you interacted with her, whether it could have played that voice mother soundbite. And if nobody knows what I mean by the voice mother soundbite, I'll put it up now, so you can have a listen. It's terrifying! Okay, people. Now I'm wearing brown trousers. I honestly am. Look, wearing brown trousers. Brown trousers! That would have been a brown trouser moment inside a game, wouldn't it? You know, I didn't play all of it. It goes on for a while. It's a staff of nightmares. Imagine that. She follows you around the Nexus and you turn, you talk to her, and that just sounds off throughout the whole of the Nexus and echoes. Oh my God, that's a staff of nightmares. Hey guys, that would have added some gravitas to this whole boy mother type stuff, wouldn't it? Again, if you're listening, Hello Games, could do that in the future, couldn't you? Especially, I would love to see the Ariadne um, story mission. You know, from the whole summer from a few years back, implemented as an expedition with a little bit more depth or something, or even added into the game, almost like you know the Artemis quest line, and in the Ariadne quest line, all of that story arc, the summer lore, maybe revamp it a bit, make it a bit more interesting because we was doing it every weekend, and it was something that happened every seven days. It didn't feel too repetitive. It didn't feel too boring. It started to towards the end, but if you could rework that into an expedition or an actual in-game. Mission, I think you'll be on to a winner. So anyway, people inside the view of us, that's pretty much everything I've got for you. There's a lot of speculation in there, a lot of sort of excitement, but the actual end score for this expedition, because the, the, the awards were so good, the expedition was a joy to play through. There was only a couple of missions that had hang-ups um, for me, but there was a couple that had bugs, that were programmers blockers, but I don't think there was anything that was game crashing or game ending in this one. There's just a few niggles which Hello Games fixed rather quickly. So that's why it's given a 9.2 out of 10 from the Captain of the Steves. I hope you feel that was a fair rating. Let us know what you would have scored it inside of the comments. And until next time, goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.